you. <laughs> is happening right now. Stand back, Roxy. <laughs> is this real life? Five. Whew. Can she do six? Yes, she can. Here, you put your mouth on. Juju on that beat. Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. It's Love Always Endures. So today's video is going to be interesting, different. I want it to be one of many. This is the inaugural length check, okay? I think I'm gonna go ahead and start doing two month updates. A month is not really enough time to see any type of difference in the length of my hair, but I feel like two months is something that's reasonable. So today marks two months since I got my hair cut. And so I didn't do a previous length check, but I will post some pictures here. Okay, so basically those pictures showed you like directly after my cut, the day after my cut, the week after my cut, like basically that's how it looked. You'll notice that the, end, the what do you call them? Not the ends. The sides were a lot more scraggly and sparse than they are now. Um, they're not as bad as they were when my hair was still in the process of falling out, but keep in mind, my hair stopped falling the first week of March and I got my hair cut on the last day of March, March 31st. So here we are two months later, and I wanna do my first initial, legitimate, official thing check, okay? So, I'm just gonna pull a piece. With length checks, I've never done one of these before. So, I think I'm supposed to grab a piece from the front, right? Front, middle. Wait, let me feel it. Okay, front, middle. This is a piece. This is a piece. Okay, is there still hair there? I don't feel it. Okay, there. Even though I feel like there's areas that are even longer in here somewhere. No, okay, no, <laughs> just kidding. And then I'm supposed to take a piece from the back. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so that's basically an idea. That's kind of gonna be, this is gonna be my running video diary. So I'll show you again at four months and again at six months right before I um, get my hair colored. Now, for those of y'all who didn't know, six months is a pivotal time for me. Get, get away from that popcorn. Six months is a very pivotal time for me in my hair journey because that is the point in time in which I need to make a decision on whether or not I wanna get my hair cut again or if I just want to get it trimmed. I'm definitely getting it colored, but I haven't figured out whether or not I want to keep my hair long, short, or grow it out long. So we'll see. But I just wanted to talk to you real quick. This is going to be a brief video. I just kind of wanted to give you a synopsis on how things have been for me over the past two months. Um, for those of you who didn't know, my hair loss journey was so emotional. Obviously, it was out of my control, just being sick with ulcerative colitis. My hair went into the telogen phase. It was pushed into the telogen phase. So basically, the way the hair cycle works is you have the antigen phase and you have the telogen phase. So the antigen phase is supposed to be about 80% hairs growing, right? And then the telogen phase is about 20% hairs falling out, you know, basically your normal shedding. The way you know the difference between a shed hair and a broken hair is the shed hair will have a bulb of skin on the end and a broken hair won't. So my hair was definitely shedding coming from the root as part of the telogen phase. However, because I have telogen effluvium, my hair flipped. So instead of 80% growing, 20% loss, it was reverse. So now I have more hair falling out than I have growing. And so as a result, it starts to thin and thin and thin. And like I stated in my first video, telogen effluvium is temporary hair loss due to severe trauma on the body, such as childbirth, 
surgery, or severe illness. In the beginning of March is when I actually started seeing the hair stop falling out. So keep in mind, my hair had only been growing for two and a half, three weeks when I actually cut it. So with that being said, that's already a blessing right there, okay? So the whole thing about me getting used to it, it was a lot easier than I thought. I could have sworn I was about to be a little boy and the only being in this world that was gonna love me were my parents and Roxy and that was how I felt I was going to look. Definitely a lot different than I thought. I thought I was gonna have something more bulbous going on back here. I was sure I had like a light bulb shaped head and everything so I didn't think I was going to like it which is why I planned that photo shoot. So here I am two months later in love with my hair trying to figure out what I want to do. Like there's things about long hair that I miss and things about long hair that I do not miss. I do miss having buns. I do miss having puffs, but I think this really suits me and I really, really like it. So, <sighs> I would say let me know down below what you want me to do, keep it cut or let it grow, but it's my decision <laughs> and I have to make it. And even after the polls come in and, and everybody's expressed how they feel, I still have to feel okay with it, you know? So right now it's growing, I'm enjoying the journey and at six months I'll make a decision on what I want to do. We'll see. So like I said, having this short hair has truly been a phenomenal experience. If I choose to grow it back out, which I don't know yet, I will be glad that I did this. And I'll also know that if I ever want to later on in life do it again, that I can pull it off. And being that I do have tillage and effluvium, it's likely that when I have children, which I want four, it might happen again. And I have to be prepared for that. But I do know that this is something that I can totally do. So. As my hair grows, every morning, I, after I've sponged it, I like pat it down. Because I like the quaff look. Like the hair gets so long around where my glasses go, I'm constantly like tucking my glasses underneath so that it doesn't look weird. But yeah, I find myself just trying to keep everything. So yeah. I've literally had 61 good hair days. I haven't had a single bad hair day yet. And even when I put a hat on on top of my head and go somewhere, I still sponged it underneath. I still, it's still cute because you never know what's gonna happen. What if I have to take my hat off? What if the hat blows off? You know what I mean? So it's been phenomenal. Like I really do feel like I'm making up for all of those bad hair days that I had. And though I wore a wig for a while when I was transitioning to this decision, I still felt like underneath my hair was just struggling. It was just struggling. It really was. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I, I was really just doing a lot of talking, so I hope y'all didn't mind that too much. But um, if you have any questions or comments or concerns or anything, let me know down below. I have some other really awesome videos coming up. I wanna talk to y'all about color and like some of the do's and don'ts of color. I know I owe y'all an accessories part two video, and I also have some pretty other interesting things coming up. Please like, comment, subscribe, click that little bell by the subscribe button so you can see and get a notification when my videos are up because I'd love to hear from you all and I'd love for you all to hear from me. Okay, so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Peace. Oh, one for Roxy. Come here too. Can you see her? Okay, ready?